everyone! So I'm here today to tell you my top 10 books I read this year. Um, they're in no particular order, um, but yeah, I absolutely adored these books. I'm definitely, I definitely will reread these again and again um, throughout my life. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, the first book on my list is The Assassination of Brangwyn Spurg. I might be butchering that name <laughs> um, but I recently read this book and I just like I fell in love so one of my favorite like one of my favorite uh, tropes is like unlikely friendships when two people like that are not meant to be like friends become friends by the end of the book love that um, so this book was just like the perfect friendship story um, so it's it's just a book it it so the reason why I picked this book up was flipping through it, you will notice immediately that it's just like, it's very creatively um, written. Half the book isn't just pictures, and then half the book is, is text. They're like interwoven together, so it's like a really cool reading experience. So it's a story between elves versus goblins, and they don't like each other in this fantastical world. Um, uh, but really the message is kind of about how history is sometimes um told and how it's uh how it's like misunderstood and how propaganda starts and um how uh people judge one another based on like the stories they tell themselves and tell each other um and it's kind of like this message is kind of like woven into the narrative um yeah and it's a it's a really good read um, it was really nice to like read like a 500 plus page novel in two days because half of it is images. Um, so that's also a bonus. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. My second book is called Tonight Owl from Dogfish. And this is also one of those uh, friendship stories where there's two, the two uh, protagonists are like, they, they shouldn't be liking each other because they're like really different, but they do end up becoming friends. This is a contemporary middle grade novel um, and it's written all through emails and letters. And it's this really, really cute story about these two girls um, who kind of find each other because their dads start dating. And uh, these two girls like kind of like don't like each other because they've always been like kind of uh, single single children with no siblings and they're like we don't want to be sisters like we don't want uh we don't want to be friends but they end up going to the summer camp together and they um and through the exchange of letters and um emails they they become really good friends and i read this book like in a day it was it was on a plane ride and i i was like bawling and gushing at the end i loved it um yeah so if you want another friendship book pick this up my third book is a illustrated graphic nonfiction called The Adventures of Alexander Von Humboldt. Um, and when I saw this at the bookstore, I was like, I need to read this. Um, it's this huge kind of like illustrated book. And when you flip through it, you'll, I wish I had the physical copy to show you, but you'll understand if you ever come across this book. Um, when you flip through it, every page seems like handcrafted and unique. Um, and it tells, uh, it's, it's a nonfiction book, so it tells uh, uh, the story of Alexander von Humboldt, who is a famous explorer and naturalist, kind of came before Darwin, um, and his, uh, his journey through South America in the early 1800s. Um, yeah, I learned so much through this book. Um, it wasn't a quick read, which I thought it'd be because it's like highly illustrated because it's a lot of like dense information, but I really liked that it was accessible for adults who just like wanted to learn more about Humboldt, but also kids who like need those like images or who would like those images. Um, I think it could be like a really great teaching tool, but yeah, if you ever come across this, just like flip through it and you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. My next book i think i'm on number four now um i'm sort of cheating here but i'm going to lump all of these books because they're into in the same series uh the hilda books um so i heard of heard of the book uh heard of the th series through the netflix show and um i always like was intrigued when i like looked at it at the at the bookstore um but I fell in love with these books. Uh, the illustrations are so beautiful. The colors are vibrant. Also, I love Hilda. She's so adventurous and curious and like stubborn and just like unapologetically herself. She is like the person I want to be. 
Um, I love all the adventures she goes on, and the books are so cute. Like all these like fantastical creatures, like giants and little flying birds and ravens. It's it's awesome. My fifth book is This Was Our Pack by Ryan Andrews. Um, I must have talked about this book a million times now, um, but I can't get over it, and definitely in my top ten this year. Uh, it's a wonderful graphic novel, beautiful illustrations, really um, just a really fun journey with unexpected twists and turns, um, fun creatures and stuff in it. Um, if you're a fan of like Studio Ghibli movies, um, then you would really like this book. Um, yeah, I love this book. I just want to like rip out all the pages and like frame it and put them on their wall because illustrations are so beautiful. My sixth book is There There by Tommy Orange. Uh, this is probably the only adult book on my list this year. I kind of stopped reading adult books like halfway through the year. Um, but I, I read this earlier this year and I was blown away by this. It's a debut uh, novel that takes place in Oakland, California. I loved how this book was structured. Every chapter is a different point of view from a different indigenous character and it's all leading up to this grand, um, to the big Oakland powwow and each chapter is about these different characters and their different reasons for why they want to attend this powwow, whether it's for, um, whether it's, the, whether it's uh, for like reconnecting with other people, whether they want to be part of the powwow, if they want to dance, um, uh, if they want to like kind of discover their roots and their heritage, or if they just want to win the like grand prize money at the end. Um, it's awesome. I was just, it's, it's, I learned so much as well. Um, and I think it's a very important novel and I think, um, everyone, everyone should read it. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see what's next, like what Tommy Orange is going to write next. My seventh book is a, uh, past Alcott Jr. book. Uh, it's Arusha. Um, and, uh, I, I, I discovered this book, uh, when I started working here and like looking through all the past packs past boxes um but love Arusha like I cannot get over how great this book is it's so funny I love Aru I think she's just witty and clever and sarcastic and um she's fearless and I love the Hindu mythology um that's uh, throughout this book. Uh, yeah, I really related to it and I can't wait for the third book to come out next year. Um, I, I just have no words. I, I love this book. My eighth book is um, another graphic novel. It's the Gravity Falls Lost Legends graphic novel. I believe I talked about this before. Um, but I think this was the funniest book I've read all year. Um, every page I literally laughed out loud. Um, it, uh, I, I'm such a huge fan of Gravity Falls. It's one of my favorite shows. And so when I discovered this book, it was like just coming home to uh, these characters and to these people that I just like love. Um, and yeah, it's great. It's funny. Go read it. My ninth book is uh, another uh, nonfiction book. Um, it's called The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. Um, it is also an adult book. Um, and I read this at the beginning of the year and I was just so blown away by this book. Um, I learned a lot about uh, indigenous culture in both Canada and in the US and um, some of their history and what they're facing today as well. I think Thomas King is a brilliant writer. He's sarcastic. He's witty. Um, yeah, I, I just learned so much from this book and I think everyone should read it. Um, I think it is also very important for us to be aware of um, what other types of people and what other uh, cultures face in our society today. And my last book, number 10, is Snapdragon by Kat Lay. Um, so this is actually an arc and it comes out, it says February 2020. Um, so I don't know if this is cheating or not, but I, I read it this year. <laughs> um, and this graphic novel, it is, it's so good. So it kind of like teeters between middle grade and young adult. Um, it says 10 to 14, so kind of in that range. Um, but I loved this book. Um, Kat Lay is one of the many talented people that works on the Lumberjane series. Um, and it, I, it was just so funny. It's full of like diverse characters. Um, 
queer characters. Um, it's about this girl named Snap. Um, she becomes friends with this old witch in town, or what people think. Um, like she, they think she's a witch, but she's not actually a witch. I love this book. I loved uh, Snapdragon, the character. She's just, she's this grumpy kid who's so unapologetically herself. She, um, she's kind of like known as this weirdo kid and uh, doesn't really get along. Uh, people don't really get along with her, um, but I loved her because she has this really soft spot for animals and the people around her. So she's really caring. She's just a little misunderstood. Um, and I really loved it and the plot was really fun and intriguing and yeah, I will definitely uh, I can't wait for February because I'm definitely gonna buy it uh, The like actual copy when it comes out. Okay, so that is my top 10 books of the year um, It's really hard for me to do these lists because I pretty much love everything I read um, So like I, I think I read like about a hundred books this year and like 99% of them were awesome So this was hard, but this was like the top 10 I, I wanted to share with you If you like this video give it two thumbs up and thanks for being awesome. Happy holidays!